Hello there, and welcome to another Starfield-related uh, update. I just want to start by saying uh, I apologize for my voice. I am still sick, but I'm getting better. I just wanted to get this update out as quickly as possible. So we got a Starfield update 1.9.47 patch notes. Uh, this is for January 18th, so this came out literally probably like an hour or two ago. So uh, currently, you can only avail of this update if you're playing on the Steam branch, the beta branch. If you are not, you will have to wait two weeks um, to avail of it. So if you're on Xbox or you're not on the branch. So we're going to just read through the patch notes. So they start off by saying our latest update is now available in our Steam beta. This update brings over 100 fixes and adjustments, most of which focus on quality of life improvements and quest fixes. Our full list of patch notes is available below. We believe we got the pesky asteroid follower this time. We are grateful for all the feedback we've seen and receive and will continue to monitor and track your issues and critiques. As we noted last year, um, we'll continue to have a steady stream of updates about every six weeks. So if you don't see your issue addressed below, don't lose faith. Keep sharing your feedback. Thanks again. See you in Starfield. So fixes improvement. This is all uh, I skimmed briefly. This is all fixes. So uh, forewarning, there is no new content added currently with this update. Um... I'm assuming that when the update does go live across all platforms, uh, when it leaves beta in two weeks' time, it's going to not still have any new content, as if they had new content, they probably would have added it here. But you never know. Uh, it would be kind of cool if they didn't show the new content in beta so that everyone could kind of get access to it together, but, you know, anyway. So, fix improvement. Animation fixed an issue where characters' eyes remain closed instead of blinking in third person. This is something that I'm glad that they fixed because it was very obnoxious when I was trying to take screenshots for thumbnails. Address rare case where small animation pops could be seen in third person. Creatures and enemies fixed incorrectly invisible enemies on some planets. I'm glad they fixed this. This has happened quite frequently and it's I believe it's a bug that came from Fallout 4. I'd be randomly on a planet and I'd start getting attacked and taking health damage and there'd be nothing around me. And the only way I could, like, survive was running back to my ship and leaving because the creature would, like, destroy me if I just stayed out too long. Uh, fixed an issue that could occur on some enemies causing them to stand instead of falling to the ground. I believe this is in reference to on low G and zero G. Um, when you kill an enemy, they just kind of stand there as opposed to falling over. Crew and companions. Fixed crew members and companions positioning near the cockpit after fast traveling to the ship. This is a, a weird kind of fix. I don't know if it's like necessarily needed it to be a fix unless like there's an extreme case where like all of your companions get you like trapped. But it's still what it is what it is. Companions fixed a possible control lock when talking to a companion without entering a dialogue while simultaneously trying to exit a ship. General fixed an issue that prevented Windows users from saving if their username features certain characters. It's a PC related issue. Fix rare save game corruptions on PC, Microsoft Store, and Steam. Fix an issue that could lead to a control lock or a crash after loading a quick save while in targeting mode. Fixed player marker following the camera on the surface map. Fixed rare issue that prevent access to the main menu when prompted to press any button. Now, I haven't necessarily noticed this on Starfield, but I've noticed it more and more on other Xbox-related games, so I don't know if it's just a Starfield thing. Like, I've noticed on uh, games like Baldur's Gate and stuff, sometimes it'll pop up. I have to, like, basically restart my game. Uh, body type uh, no longer resets to default while loading a Starborn save from the main menu. I have not noticed that necessarily, but then I don't really look at my character too often in third person to, like, determine whether or not the body changed. Fix flickering on Neon's trade tower elevator panel. Improve the appearance of the Ryujin kiosk material during nighttime. Fix rare issue with how Sidonia's panel could display the hours without incident. Added optimization to cloud syncing of save games, Microsoft Store and Xbox. I have noticed that this is not necessarily a Starfield issue, but I have noticed with a lot of games, uh, I've been having issue with like the cloud syncing. Every time I load them, I, like I have to go through that little menu where like it syncs all my save data. So hopefully this improves that, and who knows, it might even improve the the save lo the saving or the loading time. Probably not though. Improved how crowds behave when desired target is reserved. I don't know what that necessarily means. Obviously, it like. It's focusing on the crowd and how a crowd behaves, but when desired target is reserved, I feel like that's like coding speak, and they would have been nice if they kind of didn't put it in coding speak and they explain what that means. But anyway, fix an issue that could cause airlock doors to sometimes appear floating in the sky when arriving in a location. Uh, 
Fix unintended text in the shipbuilder's UI. <clears throat> Fix game session not properly resuming from shutdown and energy saving mode. Uh, various stability improvements. Graphics. Improve widescreen support. 32.9, 21.9, and 16.10. I'm glad that they fixed this. I know a lot of people uh, have been having issues with the uh, widescreen. I know uh, a couple of friends of mine have been having issues too. Where like it's very hard to operate in widescreen mode. Added support for stars displaying sun disk geometry. Just going off of the sound of that, it sounds like something the Xbox would be able to handle. <laughs> so let me know on the PC what what that looks like. Shadows can now be seen on planets rings from planet surfaces. That's quite cool. Nice little immersive fix. Improved eyes and skins on crowd characters. That's um that's another really nice one to have. Uh as the eyes on kind of NPC. Sorry, I do apologize. My uh, my headset decided to turn off even though it's working. Uh that's a nice change because the eyes on like crowded characters looks a bit, a bit just a bit too sketchy so hopefully it fixes that they look less like aurora addicts more like npcs improve reflection on water now this is something this may not may just be because on xbox the reflection of the water is set to very low but i haven't really noticed it maybe on pc it might look a lot better now improve contact shadow on character skin on the xbox and the pc on various settings Improved contact shadow on character cloth on pc uh high and ultra improved contact shadow in first person Improved lighting in character generation menu. This is one that I'm glad they fixed. I noticed when um, I was trying to make my character, when I was trying to update my character, actually, change its hair and stuff, This the depending on where you do it, <clears throat> certain, like, um, certain enhanced stores, it's, yeah, it's just very, the, the lighting is a bit poopy. Reduce the appearance of minor artifacts during cutscenes, during camera transitions. That basically, I'm assuming, means there's little kind of glitches with the, um, with the, with the graphical like graphical errors that's what artifacts usually mean they don't mean like the actual artifacts in game fixed flickering on a number of vfx's stand storm corrosive liquid pools waterfalls fixed a rare issue with the camera would lock while enhanced scanner mode whenever watching flying fauna i have had this issue happen that is quite annoying glad they fixed that fixed a potential camera lock when opening a game menu a moment before triggering dialogue with another character i have also had this happen <clears throat> Both of these issues were also used to require me to have to restart my game, so nice they fixed that. Address various shadow popping, flickering, and artifact issues. Improve the visibility of the sun's lens flare during sunset and sunrise. That's going to be interesting to see how that nice that looks. Fixed a rare issue where foam and grime would show up, not show up. Fixed rare flickering VFX that could occur in space on the Series S. Fixed rare hair flickering on the X and S. Fixed occasional flicker on digiframes and TV screens. Adjust the appearance of bloom when activating the hand scanner. Improve the reappear the appearance of clouds during weather transitions. Fixed rare case where alignment of grass and wind would appear disconnected. Reduce bloom intensity effect while motion blur is active. I don't know why anyone would use motion blur on PC. I always find motion blur just kind of makes it worse when you try to turn, but anyway. Addressing issues with concealment uh, effect not always applying when using the hand scanner. Concealment effect. Is that the concealment? That's the, the perk for... Why would that affect the hand scanner? Okay, anyway. Fix visible edge of the ocean in the distance when seeing from a very high point. That's kind of a nice fix. So apparently if you used to get really high, you could end up like seeing where the map would end. Uh, fixed rare white flickering dots around characters hair during cutscenes fixed a readability issue in the star map when using large menu font fixed inventory menu occasionally failing to generate previews using a mouse fixed a brief depth brief depth of field issue that would sometimes occur when aiming alt tabbing or leaving a dialogue screen fixed occasional light transition issues after loading or exiting a location uh, hopefully that uh, includes uh, ships and stuff. Cause sometimes when I load into a ship, it just doesn't. Specifically, um, a Hope Tech ships. They're very dark. Fix an issue that could cause intermittent bands to appear in distant fog. Fix an issue that could cause fog color to appear inconsistent. I think I've noticed this on some of my uh, videos when I do any sort of kind of video around New Atlantis. When the fog, the fog always kind of has an orange tinge to it. And it kind of doesn't make sense because like New Atlantis doesn't have really an orange tinge to it. So... Hopefully that was an issue and they fixed it. Fixed a rear issue that could cause rocks to disappear near the player on the surface of the planet. Fixed a crash that could occur when switching to DLSS with dynamic resolution active as a PC. Must be nice having DLSS. 
on PC. Fixed flickering and delayed shadows sometimes occurring after unpausing the game. Fixed various FSR2 and DLSS artifacts, noise, black dots, ghosting. Fixed flickering when using the hand scanner with DLSS enabled. Fixed initial lighting conditions when landing on a planet. Improved lighting at 73 locations and fixed various geometry textures and ghosting issues. Now, the improved lighting at 73 locations, I wonder by locations, do they mean like physical locations, like, you know, map based locations, or they just mean location like cells? Because if they, hopefully it does include like, like the, by locations, they also mean like the habitat modules and stuff and ships, because some of the ship uh, habitat modules, their light textures are very bad. I'm looking at you, Hope Tech. Outposts fixed a rare uh, missing terrain issue that could occur after fast traveling to an outpost near New Atlantis. Fixed an issue that could cause bulldoze objects to reappear when returning to an outpost. This is a, That's actually an issue that uh, used to happen in Fallout 4 and 76, so it's kind of interesting that that's still happening to this day. Fixed an issue that could cause hazards to remain even when the hazard was removed by bulldozing. Fix an issue where outpost cargo link would be removed from the terminal list if connected, disconnected, then reconnected to another cargo link during the cargo ship landing sequence. I'm glad they fixed that because uh, setting up the cargo links uh, can be a bit tedious. And after you had set them up, it would have been annoying to like you know lose out on them, having to redo everything. Fix an issue where weapon cases built by players now post would populate with weapons and ammo after loading the game. I thought they already fixed that. I don't know if that's just there because they're reiterating it or if they like fixed an issue where player yeah no i don't i i part of me wants to think that maybe they added it back into the game but i don't think they did i think they're just reiterating powers fixed a rare issue that could cause the phase time power to remain enabled that sounds really op kind of wish i'd seen that fixed an extreme speed that could occur in zero g when using phase time power Solar flare power now accounts for critical hits. That's kind of cool. I used the solar flare once or twice in the past, and it was quite good, but it was lacking because it couldn't hit crits, so now it can't. We've got a lot of quests and random encounter changes here, so we'll just skim through them. <clears throat> Absolute power, fixed missing slate in the safe, preventing from completing the optional objective, locate evidence to extort a Yumi. Background checks, fix possible control lock that occur if caught by security. Derelict ship, fix an issue preventing the player from research re researching the pilot's ship seat if they did not have access to advanced locks. That's kind of a cool change. A lot of the time in Bethesda games, if you don't have the required lock pick or hacking skill, you can miss out on certain things. So here Bethesda clearly doesn't want you to miss out on specific ships, which is kind of cool. Drinks on the house, fixed rare occurrence where the door to sub-11 could remain locked. Echoes of the past, fixed Delgado getting stuck at the bottom of the stairs during continuing to explore that could occur if the lock was left during his dialogue mission, uh, history dialogue. Echoes of the past again, resolved an issue that could cause Mass and Delgado's guns to be invisible. <clears throat> Eye of the Storm, fixed an issue that could cause data transfer to not start after placing the core. Another Eye of the Storm change, fixed an issue where the docking prompt will be missing if, on the legacy ship if the player undocked with the legacy then reload is safe. Um... Executive level, fix an issue where the player gets stuck on the chair in the Ryujin Industrial HQ conference room. Failure to communicate. <clears throat> Fixed an issue that prevented the player from finishing the quest if they downed all members of the defense pact. I don't know how you would do that, but fair play if you did do that. Further into the unknown, fixed a rare crash that would incur when trying to dock with the eye. Ground pounder, fix an issue where the door to Lazama could sometimes be locked if the player left during the quest and came back. I actually had this happen to me during my playthrough. I left to regen health in my ship and I came back and I had to load a save to get into that, so it's nice they fixed that. Hostile intention, fix locked door in the steam tunnel where the terramorph transformation occurs. Into the unknown, fix the rares that could prevent the quest from starting after completing the old neighborhood. Into the unknown, fixed a rare issue where the temple might not populate when receiving the go-to objective. Now, I've noticed this quite a lot um, when doing that quest line is you have to kind of go and come back to get the like actual pop-up. Legacy's End, fixed an issue that could prevent interacting with Delgado when he was behind the glass inside the command center of the key. Another Legacy's End, fixed a debris pile where the player would become stuck while trying to reach the mess hall. Seems like there's a lot of uh, bugs tied to the uh, Crimson Fleet quest line. Missing, missed beyond measure fixed a dialogue between Sarah and Walter not playing at the lodge no sudden movements fixed companions not following player during personal quests on the run fixed an issue related to May Divine becoming inaccessible um, 
the objective updated to listen to her introduction. On the run, fix this possible lock, uh, control lock when sitting at the table to talk to Jade McMillan. One small step, fix the rear that would prevent Lane Heller from exiting the airlock. Oh god, that would be a pretty bad bug to happen at the very start of the game. Operation Starseed, fixed a bad view that would occur if Beagle was boarded after a long idle. Power from Beyond, fix an issue that caused missing starborn temples and scanner disturbances that could prevent obtaining all the powers from that universe. Rough Landing, resolved an issue that could occur during the meet up with Milena Axelrod. Shadows of the Neon, fix an issue that could occur when repeatedly using the door to Jalen Price's office before he progressed to Neon. Supra et Ultra fixed a control lock that could occur when entering the flight sim while Gara's attempt to arrest you. It's kind of funny, like, these sort of, like, things. Like, the amount of st stuff you'd have to do, like, getting arrested in there while trying to do the simulator. Like, <laughs> who does that? Anyway, tapping the grid, fix inaccessible jump boxes, junction boxes that could occur after the hunter attacks the lodge. The best there is, fix an issue that could prevent objectives from advancing when talking to Neva and Jasmine in the engineering room. Empty nest fixed an, an issue and issue fixed an issue that could cause Sam Cole's gun to be invisible when inside Jacob's house. The heart of Mars fixed another location that could potentially prevent recurring the heart of Mars. The pale lady fixed an inaccessible ship crew log slate, making it impossible to complete the encounter. Top of the list, Phil Hill. His name is Phil Hill. I never noticed that. Uh, should now accept survey data for Somati. War Relics reserve the issue, resolve the issue that could prevent Kaiser from moving to the mission site. And then finally, where hope is built, fix a crash that would occur with a specific set of player behaviors. Shipping customization updates now, or fixes. Fixed another case that could cause the asteroid to fall the ship in space. Wow, Bethesda, you ruined the poor asteroid. Fix the ship hatch being inaccessible, marked inaccessible after swapping to a home ship. I have had this happen quite a lot, so glad they fixed that. Fix an issue where the ship you could end up in an unintended state by simultaneously attempting to fast travel while grav jumping. I've had that happen too. It's kind of annoying. Glad they fixed that. Fix a view issue that could incur when fast traveling during ship targeting mode. Fix an issue that could occur when entering ship targeting mode immediately after selecting a grav jump. Fix an issue that caused non-functional ladders to appear when the player modified their ship with a Tayo all-in-one berth top A and a Deimos one by one. Fix an issue where the legendary ship could take too long to resume firing after weapons were repaired. Spaceship combat can now match should now match ground combat difficulty increase with successive trips to the Unity. So I don't know if that just means that if you like tweak the difficulty yourself or if you actually like going through the Unity increases combat difficulty, which is interesting. Fix an issue where loading an exit save while docked to a space station could cause name changes of the ship. That is that what what caused the issue of ships changing name? I'm glad they fixed that. I used to lose the plot and think, did I capture another ship without knowing? Fixed marker not pointing to the current home ship after performing a save or a load between different ships. Fixed an issue that could cause the frontier to incorrectly appear if a non-home ship was removed from a landing pad. And then for skills, rejuvenation skill VFX no longer replays whenever the hand scanner is open in third person. Surveying, fixed surveying, challenge progress issue with mineral resources. And then targeting control, fixed inconsistencies with level 3 and 4. Finally, weapons and items, fixed incorrect load, reload animations, amounts that could occur when consuming a trauma pack. Fixed FOV and zoom issues with scopes. Fixed weapon sound effects, uh, continuously continuing to play after killing an enemy. Fixed turret state not being restored properly after a save and load. Fixed an issue that caused the helmet light to not appear in third person after saving mode. So that's <clears throat> that's pretty much it with all of the updates. A lot of fixes here, which I'm really happy about. The There is one fix now. I Well, there's probably a lot of fixes that you guys could think of that they may have missed. Hopefully they won't do in the future update. But one ship customization, one I noticed, or even ship in general, not customization, is whenever I find that if you load an auto save or just another save while in a ship, it resets your pips which is kind of annoying. It's not like game breaking, but it's kind of annoying. But yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think of these changes. And uh, also, if any of these changes are changes you've been waiting on, I know a lot of you guys, there's been a couple of changes you've been waiting on to kind of get back in the game properly. So let me know if, if this update uh, remedied any of those solutions. And like I said, um, if you are on the uh, Steam update, um, let me know how it how it feels. Um. 
and just yeah for anybody that's not on the steam update you guys excited to get a first big update it's probably going to be quite a big update just in terms of a lot of fixes a little bit sad that there's no like content being added but i'm glad that they're getting all these fixes out of the way as opposed to adding new stuff and just you know like kind of it's 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 a good take bethesda like good job fix things first before adding new content but yeah that's that's pretty much it as always guys uh thanks for watching let me know what you guys think down below and uh don't forget to subscribe if you like this sort of content Bye bye